Hello, and welcome to the Daily Bible Podcast with Trisha and Michelle. We're just two friends reading through the Bible chronologically and encouraging you to do the same. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook, Daily Bible Podcast, or go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net. We are going through the one-year chronological Bible, and we have links for that in our show notes and also on our website. And if you're on Facebook, check out our community group. Just look for Daily Bible Podcast. Now, it'll ask you a couple questions like, why do you want to be part of our group? Mm -hmm. I love reading the answers. People say, I want to know God more. This Mm. is the first time I've read the Bible or I've read the Bible many times and I'm just enjoying hearing more and understanding it better. Um, One today said, I'm listening to your podcast. And that's all you need to put. I'm listening to your podcast (laughs) and then you're welcome into our group. That's awesome. That is awesome. So yes, please go to Facebook, look for Daily Bible Podcast and become a part of our community. We love our friends. Okay, so today is a brand new month. It's September 1 and we have four months to go. Can you believe it? We have (laughs) been reading straight through the Bible chronologically in the historical timeline for eight solid months now. That's amazing. And, but I guess eight solid months and we're still in Ezekiel. I mean, I know the the New Testament is going to go really quickly. Yeah. What? What? And yet we're reading about God and we're learning about God together. Mm -hmm. And it is a really cool thing. So, okay. Well, today, today we are reading Ezekiel 32 verses 17 through 32, Ezekiel 33 verses 1 through 20. Jeremiah 52 verses 28 through 30. Then we move back into the Psalms, Psalm 137 verses 1 through 9, First Chronicles 4, 24 through 43, and we finished up with First Chronicles 5 verses 1 through 17. So our reading today starts with March 17th during the 12th year, another message came to Ezekiel. Now, remember, each word in the Bible counts, and it's important to the entire story. So I got stuck on the March 17th. I really did. And I think we've, we've, seen, we've seen some dating mm-hmm. and, and everything, but I got stuck on the March 17th because I was like, well, in some ways, it's like, whatever, I could just skim over that. But in other ways, it's like, why is that here? And one scholar mentioned that about this idea of Ezekiel dating his words received from God. He said, we do well to observe special days in our diary of the years, the day of our conversion or consecration, the day of deliverance from overwhelming trouble, the day when God summons us to some new duty, or the day when paradise shown us a new golden sheen. And I was like, oh, so March 17th was when God showed Ezekiel something new. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah. And so, I just love that. It reminds me of like almost the captain's log. Have you ever watched the old Star Trek? Like no. captain's log, March 3rd, 2075, <gasps> the Aquaria galaxy. I don't know. It just puts a time and a place and a yeah. understanding yeah. of where you are before you launch into it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we today we see that Egypt is overthrown and conquered and the other nations are terrified that they are next. And God tells Ezekiel to weep for Egypt and the other mighty nations for they are being sent to the pit. And some translations say depths of the earth. Other translations say shoal, which um, basically is hell. And the other outcasts are there slaughtered by the sword. So Assyria Elam, Meshesh, Tubal, and Edom. These nations also struck terror in the hearts of people, but now they will be put to shame. Mm. (sighs) Some heavy things. Next, God tells Ezekiel that he is compared to the watchman. The watchman sees the enemy and sounds the alarm. The watchman is responsible to do his duty and let the people know of the coming attack. Ezekiel is the watchman for the people of Israel, and he's to warn them that wicked people will die. And God is saying that he's going to hold him responsible for their death if he doesn't warn them. And here is the message of Ezekiel's warning. Our sins are heavy upon us. We are wasting away. Turn, turn from your wickedness, O people of Israel. Mm -hmm. Why should you die? 
God wanted Israel to live and not die. And the question, why should you die, O people of Israel, means that they didn't have to perish in the coming judgment. God wanted his people to live. We've we've been talking about the hope. There was hope if they would just turn from their wicked ways. God wanted to change their life. He wanted to forgive them from their past sins, for them to walk in righteousness. But Israel turns around and they start questioning God's fairness. Yeah. But God is God and he will judge each one according to their deeds, their sins. He is the fair judge. And then we see the number of captives in Babylon by this time was around 4,600. That is less than I thought. <laughs> Mine too. I, I really was thinking that there would be, this was, this was what? round two of the exile. Yeah, I was, was thinking it was going to be one? like 50,000. That means mm-hmm. like a lot of people must have died. Yeah. Because remember when we had all those counts when they're counting this many from this tribe, this many from this tribe, yeah. and there's only a remnant still there. That's surprising. <laughs> it's and one of those things that makes you think of it. Like, whoa. It's, it's, it is. It's kind of like it makes you sort of stand still for a little bit and go, What? Because we know that in this small remnant of 4,600 or 4,700, what was it? 4,600. We know that in the small remnant, there still is some people who will not be coming back. Mm -hmm. So. Like that. That's I'm like still trying to picture that. We just went to a Arkansas raise a rec game. It had 72,000 people in the auditorium. And I'm thinking 4,600 is not a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. No. Wow. Okay. Um, I got to move on because my mind is still stuck on that 4,600 people. So Psalm 137 is a mournful song of the exiles during their Babylonian exile. The psalmist recounts the sorrow of of the Israelites as they sit by the rivers of Babylon, remembering Zion, which means Jerusalem, and their captors have mocked them. I was just going to say, I read this psalm in a totally different way, a totally different exactly. way than I've yeah. ever read it before. I've read it before and I've been like, oh, okay. But now I read it in a totally different way. So it's such because anyway, we know where it goes. There. No, you're fine. But, but we know where it goes. We know yeah, that's true. what's happening. We, mm-hmm. It's not like, oh, yeah, here's a song. And like, why would someone write a song about this? That's kind of weird. Well, it was written by the people when they're in exile. Like it's written during that time. It's not like yeah. someone years later wrote it and just stuck it in with the other songs. Yeah. It, I agree. Totally changed your mind and everything. So their captors mocked them asking for songs of joy, but the Israelites couldn't sing for the Lord's song in a foreign land. And it just reminds me of even, even Nazi concentration camps. They'd have Jewish, mm. Jewish prisoners playing and they'd say, play a happy song. It's like, how can we play a happy song yeah, right now exactly. as people are walking to their desks to the gas chamber? It's just, yeah. So the psalmist expresses a deep yearning for Jerusalem and blames Edom for its role in the city's destruction, which was leveling it to the ground. So even after they were taken, Edom goes in and levels it. Also, there's a harsh desire for retribution against the Babylonians and the very end about, we'll be happy when you children are dashed on the rocks. I'm like, ugh. That's intense. <laughs> Very intense. Very intense. And then First Chronicles 4 provides a ge- genealogical record of the descendants of Simeon, and it lists the clans, the numbers, and some details about their settlements. And notably, the section mentions their victory over the inhabitants of Gedor and the Hamites, led by specific figures. And then a portion of the descendants of Simeon found fertile and, and pasture lands in the region of the Amalekites which they were able to capture because the previous inhabitants had been weak and not had called about God. And so again, we're going like, why are we going back into talking about the exiles? Because they're still, even though they're in exile, they're still keeping records. They have all these records that have been the God's laws, the the chronicles, judges, they have records of where they came from. They probably carried them into exile with them so that those things would not be lost. There might have been copies back too. But these are just the records which so much is lost. Like my grandpa was in World War II. I wish I had like his uniform and his paperwork and all those things. I have no idea where they went, where they ended up. But so they treasure 
these records and they've carried them with them or if they have them during this time. Um, and it outlines the genealogy then of Reuben, which is Israel's firstborn. And that remember because of his sin with Bilta, he lost his birthright and was given to Joseph. And so again, it goes more into that. And I think it was just so interesting to talk about even when they're in the middle of being carried away, they're still remembering who they were. They're remembering what God did. And they show that this is important. Each generation is important. And they, this kind of like, they are maybe realizing a little bit that they are the descendants of this people called out by God. And I think definitely when they return, that's spoiler alert. They will return eventually. <laughs> it's going to mean something different. Mm-hmm. You know, they've been stubborn and hard hearted for a while. I think it's going to mean something now. It will mean something. And, um, and like you said, these records, they're important because God asks us to remember and, mm-hmm. and he was asking them to remember. He's like, remember, I mean, the, the, the numerous times that Isaiah and, and, and all of our major prophets have gone into remember what God did, remember what God did, remember what God did. And then you read genealogy and all of a sudden you remember in each, each mm-hmm. generation what God did and the miracles of God upon the miracles of God. And so it's, we are to remember that is a key factor in, in our lives and in our walk with, with, with him. Yeah. So we need to take a break, hear from our sponsor, and then we'll be back with the word of the day. Stay tuned. Okay, the word of the day is consequences, Mm -hmm. which we use that a lot around the Goyer house. (laughs) Do you need consequences for that? (laughs) <laughs> you can make that choice, but you will get consequences. <laughs> so it's a result or effect of an action or condition. And so since the very first week of our reading, we see one thought carried through every choice um, yep. carries consequences. <laughs> so good choices. And the God laid them out. Like just like a parent say, you can make that choice. This is the bad consequences that will happen. God laid it out. He gave them the choice. Um, And they're not the only ones who got the consequences that we read today. There's those who benefited from the fall, or so it seemed at the time, that those other nations that we, we, Michelle, talked about, they got the consequences or getting the consequences for coming against God's people, even when Babylonia was attacking them. So also we have the the role of Ezekiel Rollman as a watchman. And his consequence was, if you don't tell them what I'm telling you as a watchman, then you will receive the punishment. And so if you tell them and they listen, you will, they like the punishment will be on them. But if you don't tell them what's happening, what's what they're doing wrong, then the consequences will be on you. That's a big responsibility. That's a huge responsibility. So thinking about that, the consequences um, and that watchman, this last week we were in St. Augustine, Florida with our family with a little mini vacation at the fort of Castillo de San Marcos. And it's the oldest masonry fort in the continental U.S. So it's still standing how they made it in the fort 15 somethings, 16 somethings. Something, some t- a long time ago they <laughs> built this fort. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. But there was watchtowers. And I got so excited because I had just that morning read these verses. And so the kids were there and I'm gathered around children. I have some wisdom to impart (laughs) on you. And I said, look at this. These are the watchtowers and they don't have the wooden structures, the ladders inside, but they're high up and you can see the windows where they used to have a platform and look out over the sea. And I said, I was just reading about the the, about Ezekiel and God said, you are a watchman and you mm-hmm. have to warn the people of what's coming. Otherwise, um, you know, you will have to face the consequences. So what if the, the watchman up there, there are ships coming ready to attack and he didn't go and wake everyone up and warn them. Um, he would be responsible for not warning the people. And they were like, yes, we understand this. And I'm like, this is so cool that it was just that morning I had been reading those passages. Um, and so what if, the watchmen again in biblical times Ezekiel or anyone else they didn't say anything then they would have to they would have to deal with that but they are telling even though people mm-hmm. don't seem to be listening there are they are telling and so the watchman's role is a call to vigilance and responsibility to be alert and to listening to God's directives and so it's like are we 
are we telling people the consequences if they continue down the pass or are we just calling them um, uninformed or heathen or like they don't know unless we tell them. And if they say we're dumb or don't want to listen to us or turn a deaf ear to us, the consequences are on them. But that, so that was just like this heavy, this heavy thing. And so Jeremiah recounts the exile and it's a reminder of what happens when the nation has shifted away, but they can't say no one didn't tell us because the, the Mm -hmm. prophets were telling them. And so think about our own moments, our own moments where where we almost want to write something like those Psalms where we don't have hope, where we are lost. We feel like we're on exiles. And so what happens when we look back and see, oh yeah, this is sometimes the consequences for our own sin. So are we, choosing to head towards the blessings and promises of God where we get the good consequences or are we meandering towards Babylon with the bad consequences? Like we weren't listening. So this is how we're going to end up. So really with consequences comes discernment. We can choose to listen. We have people anywhere online. You can go and listen to people teaching biblical truths. We have the Bible with us. We have podcasts. We have so much that is sharing truth with us, with us, but we have to listen. We have to take it in. We have to contemplate it and we have to live differently or we will face the consequences. So I think it was just interesting. The whole, even though that seems very random, they're all about choose right. And this will happen. Choose wrong. This will happen and warn people, warn people of what will happen if they make wrong choices. You know, as I was reading through Ezekiel today and just sitting there thinking through just the consequences, like when God called him to be a watchman. And I was just like, this is some heavy consequences, like really Mm -hmm. heavy consequences. And I know me in my own heart, like for those people who were lost and would not listen I would feel so responsible. I mean, the feeling was so heavy in my own heart for Ezekiel at that point. Mm -hmm. And I'm just thinking through the the word consequence and it, it does, it, it can, it's very heavy. If like you feel responsible for someone else to be that warning bell, it's a heavy, heavy burden. And yet it's a needed burden because Mm God calls us to be light in the world We are to be light in the world. Like Ezekiel was the light. Ezekiel was warning the people and we need to be light and warning those around us when we see, especially when we have loved ones who do not know God. I mean, not necessarily, I don't, I mean, warning in a sense of we're warning them, but also loving them to Christ, loving them to Christ is what we need to be doing. Yeah. And, but we have to say something. Yes. So, yeah, we have to say something where if there if someone we know, even especially if they claim to be Christ follower, like you know, I just I just I know I have struggles in this area, and point things out. I had to do that recently this summer with a family member, and they were totally like, "You're right, you're right," and it was in love. It was not in condemnation, and we do need to speak and point to God's word. And then if we're raising kids or if we're serving in church. Um, it's hard having those conversations, but mm-hmm. if we don't teach our kids, like if I never taught the kids that there are people online that will pretend to be other people, <laughs> you know, and it's really dangerous out there and then something happens, um, I should have taught them. And it's the same way with God's word. Like that we need to know that these are the consequences. These are things to watch out for. Yeah. You need to be careful. And um, if they don't want to listen, then that's on them. But we have oh. to be the one to tell them. So like you said, we need to be praying for discernment. We need to make choices that are grounded in God's wisdom. We need to be in his word, Mm -hmm. listening to his word, learning from his word so that we can make these decisions and so that we can keep our mouths open and talk, talk with, with God's love and share And share where, I mean, I've had a couple of conversations this week about just sharing what I've been learning so far um, with Ezekiel and Jeremiah and just sharing with others. And and that is so important. But Trisha, will you pray for us that we would have discernment and that we would carry the burden of the consequences and keep that on the forefront of of our minds? Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, um, even though we 
feel it's a heavy responsibility. It's it's hard being a watchman. We are watchmen. We do have to tell people of consequences, Lord. We have your word. We know your word. And it's easy to point at people or to talk about people or to say you're doing it wrong, even whether it's through a, a Facebook post or through gossip or whatever. But Lord, you are asking us to teach people the consequences that come from not following your ways. But first, we need to teach them your ways. We need to share our lives. We need to share our testimonies. Lord, I pray that you will give us boldness to, first of all, um, get people to trust us. <laughs> and then second, to share what you have taught us. And then third, maybe consider changes that they can make in their lives, Lord. And I know they won't listen unless they trust us and know that we have good intentions. I pray that you will help us to just treat each other with gentleness and love and respect that as we do teach them and and talk to others about consequences, they will know that we're coming to them with a heart of tenderness and not one of condemnation because we have no right to judge because we make mistakes all the time, Lord. So help us to be tender, be gentle, be wise, but also be willing to step out and share your truth with others. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we are sending you off with some daily encouragement to get into the word and be the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, if you don't have the one-year chronological Bible that we are using, we have links to that Bible in our show notes. You can even find it in the Kindle format. Also in the show notes is a monthly and yearly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following. So tomorrow we are reading 1 Chronicles 5, verses 18 through 26, 1 Chronicles 6, verse 3, 1 Chronicles 6, verse 49, 1 Chronicles 6, verse 4 through 15, 1 Chronicles 7, and 1 Chronicles 8, verses 1 through 28. And if, again, if you need a yearly or monthly schedule of the Bible reading plan that we are following, go to our website, dailybiblepodcast.net, and that will have that listed out for you. I want to take a second to thank the team at Life Audio. You would not be listening to Daily Bible Podcast without their partnership. Go to lifeaudio.com. You're going to find other hope-filled podcasts that are going to encourage you in your walk with God today. And we will see you here tomorrow. Bye-bye.